Welcome to Season 4, Episode 12 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm going to share some ideas for making your commute more productive and enjoyable. Visit truthforteachers.com to get the transcript, links to recommended resources, and to share your thoughts on the show. These days, a lot of my travel is spent on the subway. I keep the Kindle app on my phone and I read, or maybe I'll listen to some audio, but often it's just too loud to really hear it very well. And the subway really isn't a good place to do deep thinking or to concentrate on reading a text because there's so many distractions that pull me out of my train of thought. However, I love audio as a medium. That's really the heart of why I created this podcast. It's just such an enjoyable way to get and share information, and it feels so much more personal than just the written word. So for that reason, I love my alone time in the car and also the time that I spend walking to my destinations. I have so many good options for things to listen to and do that the time just flies by. So I wanted to share some of those options in hopes of inspiring those of you who maybe dread your commute or maybe you're just looking for some ways to make it more interesting. So let's dive in with nine different ways that you can make your commute more productive and enjoyable. So first up, podcasts. That's probably the number one way that I use my time in the car. I use the iCatcher app. Even though it's slightly less intuitive than standard podcast players, I still like it because it gives me the ability to customize every single setting. I subscribe to about 30 different podcasts, and so once a week, I spend about five minutes going through them to see what's new. I then download and save the episodes that I want to hear to a specific playlist. That way, when I'm in the car, I can just hit play and the app starts working its way through every episode in that playlist. I have a playlist of things that my husband and I both like to listen to, and I pull that cue up when we're in the car together. I have a playlist of uplifting spiritual and Christian podcasts. I have a playlist of education podcasts, and I have one for entrepreneurial podcasts. I also have a playlist called Listen First. That's where I download any new episodes of a podcast that I'm dying to check out right away, and I always go to that playlist first. If you are new to podcasts, start by using just the standard podcast player that's already on your phone. If there isn't one or you're looking for an alternative, check out Pocket Casts or Stitcher. Within the app, you can browse podcasts by categories and also keywords. If you want some recommendations for good um, podcasts to listen to, check out the blog post for this week's episode. I've linked to 12 of my favorite podcasts for teachers. So podcasts are a really great way to use your commute, obviously. Another option is audiobooks. I prefer podcasts to audiobooks because they're more conversational and they tend to sound less stilted than a narrator reading a book. However, I love that audiobooks allow you to do a deep dive into a topic with no interruptions. I usually have a couple of audiobooks that I'm working through at any given time. They tend to be fairly affordable when you buy the MP3 version through Amazon, rather than the old books on CD model, which tended to be very expensive. The benefit of getting the MP3 version through Amazon is that the audiobooks automatically show up in Amazon's Audible app. It's a very easy to use player. So I ended up buying an Audible subscription. This gives you one audiobook per month. And if you fall behind, as I often do, the credits just keep rolling over so that you can use them in the future. I found this is a really good system because it allows me to select audiobooks based on what I actually want to listen to and not concern myself with the price. I pay the same amount for my Audible subscription regardless of how the audiobook is priced. So that might be a good option for you too. You could also check with your local public library. They may have audiobooks that you can listen to for free via the Overdrive app. Another cool idea, if you teach literature to students or you otherwise assign them to read specific texts, you can listen to those books in audio form during your commute. In the mornings, this habit will get you in the right state of mind before facilitating class discussions. And in the afternoons, it will help you brainstorm things that you want to discuss with students the following day. Now, another option for using your commute is to listen to online courses. If you are already taking online courses for continuing education credits, you might find that an audio version of the content is already offered. 
If it isn't, let the company or university know that this is something that you're interested in. If you're a frequent Truth For Teachers listeners, then you know teachers can get a certificate for up to 104 credit hours for participating in my 40-hour teacher workweek club. I started offering members the audio version of the club just on a whim about a year ago, and they liked it so much, I now provide every week's content in audio form so that they can listen instead of read if they want. It's really just such a convenient way to learn new information when you're trying to do professional development. Now, keep in mind, though, that an online course doesn't necessarily have to be something you do for professional purposes. You can learn a new language or take business or marketing courses if you have an entrepreneurial side job. You can even take a course that focuses on your personal development. These don't have to be for credits. You don't have to necessarily take any tests. Just listen and learn for the fun of it. So online courses is another idea if you want something beyond podcasts and audiobooks. Another way to use your commute is to brainstorm lesson ideas. The best ideas often come to us while we drive. So it's a great time to think about activities that you want to do with students. One way to do this is by intentionally planning out specific lessons and record an audio message for yourself so that you can write down your thoughts later. Another way is to listen to things that inspire you to inspire your students. Some teachers like to listen to podcasts on current events or interesting stories which they can use or quote or reference in class. A couple of examples of podcasts that might work for that are Myths and Legends, Fresh Air, TED Talks, BBC World News, This American Life, and Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. You might be able to turn portions of these podcasts into writing prompts for your students. So that can be a great way to use your time in the car. Brainstorm those lesson ideas, get inspired. You can also use your commute to listen to student work. I know a teacher who has students record a 10-minute group discussion once a week, and it's about an article that they've read or a TED Talk that she assigns. With five classes and five groups in each class, that's 25 recordings a week, or about four hours of audio, which she can easily work through in her lengthy commute. The audio itself isn't graded apart from a participation grade. She also has students do discussion through Google Docs, and that part is graded. I love this idea, and I can imagine it working in so many different contexts. For example, you could have students record their thoughts via an app in a learning station or centers. Or at the end of a collaborative activity, have each group record a verbal reflection on their work. This can be a great method because it allows you to deeply analyze students' thinking. You can get so many amazing teaching ideas and follow-up points and discussion prompts just from listening in on kids' conversations at a time when you're free to focus on the kids and not in charge of trying to manage the whole classroom and keep everything running smoothly. Also, the ability to rewind and play back portions of the discussion later in class can motivate kids to participate thoughtfully because they know you might choose to highlight insightful points that they've made in the audio recordings. Another idea for your commute? Making phone calls. We all have phone calls that need to be made, so why not get them out of the way in the car so that you can relax once you're home? Program the numbers into your phone before you set out and then use a hands-free device to make the call. Many teachers use their commute to make parent phone calls, particularly if there are a handful of families that they touch base with frequently. You can make positive phone calls home or even hold informal parent conferences. If you don't want parents to have your cell phone number, use the Skype app to call them instead. You can also make the most of your commute via phone calls by creating routines for specific personal calls. So for example, every Monday afternoon on the way home from work, you give grandma a call and check in on her. Or every Tuesday, you and your best friend catch up while you drive. These calls can give you something to look forward to and enable you to make time for catching up with the people you care about. Now, personally, I prefer asynchronous communication, and I'm a big fan of Voxer. So that's the seventh way that I recommend you use your commute, through Voxing or other asynchronous chat. Voxer works similarly to WhatsApp, if you're more familiar with that. You can leave text messages, you can leave links, photos, all those sorts of things through Voxer, but it's used primarily for recording audio. I love Voxer because you can have entire conversations with friends and family members without having to disturb them by calling them for something minor. I also like being able to get my whole thought out without being interrupted. It's amazing how many times I don't really know what I think or feel about a topic until I start talking. 
and Boxer allows me to work through a train of thought at my own pace. I can stop when I want, and I can pick up again a few seconds or minutes later to add a bit more. I never have to feel bad about rambling on too long because the recipient can listen and reply whenever it's convenient for them, and they can play messages on two or three times the speed to save time. So I use Voxer in a bunch of different ways. I like it for individual and group chats with friends. We Vox each other when we have a story to tell, mostly. It's faster than typing, and we love to hear each other's tones and expressions. It just makes us feel more connected than reading a message. I also use Voxer for education-related group chats and mastermind groups and topic-focused chats with people who push my thinking. Now that lots of educators are on Boxer, there are all kinds of chats cropping up among people who work in separate schools but have connected via Twitter or conferences or in some other way they've met. So if I have a question about something education-related or I just want to discuss something that's on my heart, I can toss it out to the group in Boxer and hear a wide variety of perspectives from people whose work I admire. I've also used Boxer for book clubs. We each read a chapter a week. And whenever we come across something in the text that speaks to us, or if we have a revelation later on in the day, we can just get on Boxer and start reflecting out loud. Then, when we have free time, we can play back each other's messages and respond. The quality of the discussion is much better than in an online book club where we have to type everything out and check our spelling and reread to see if it makes sense and so on. We share more when we're using Boxer because it's just easier and quicker to do so via audio. Another idea for your commute is to listen to music that sets the right tone. You know that one song that instantly puts a smile on your face every time you hear it? Listen to that song right after school. In fact, you can put together an entire playlist of songs that are uplifting to you. And after you've mentally processed your day, just lose yourself in the song lyrics. Some teachers like to have a set playlist for gearing up for the day and one for gearing down. I've created playlists for different moods. Try putting together some positive, energizing songs for the mornings or days when you need to get yourself pumped up, and also have a playlist that's calming and that returns you to a peaceful place. If you don't want to mess with playlists or you just tend to get tired of the same songs, consider getting Sirius XM satellite radio. I don't have a subscription myself, but we once rented a car that had Sirius XM, and I couldn't believe how much more relaxing the drive was when the station consistently played the type of music that we wanted to hear, and there were no commercial interruptions. The final way that you can use your commute is by mentally decompressing. Without a habit of releasing stress at the end of the workday, you will mentally carry the burden of every student and every undone task throughout the evening. The decompressing process is essentially your transition between thinking about work and thinking about everything else in your life. So if something negative happens during your school day and you find that the thought is still nagging at you when you leave work, practice allowing yourself to think about it for a few minutes and create some kind of mental reframing so you can stop worrying about it. That way, even if you still have schoolwork to do in the evening, you can at least relax in knowing that you won't need to mentally replay a confrontation with a student or rehearse what you want to say in a parent conference the next day. Your mental work of processing the day's events, that part will be done. So make it a habit to use your commute home to put mental closure on your day. At the very least, try taking a few deep breaths and telling yourself, my work today is done. What's left undone will still be there waiting for me tomorrow, so I don't have to think about it now. I choose to be satisfied with my efforts today and be fully present in the rest of my life tonight. I will take care of myself, my home, and the people I love. Tomorrow, I will wake up energized and ready to go back into the classroom and give 100% to my work. As you decide which of these nine options to utilize during your commute each day, I encourage you to take just a moment to reflect on what you need. Do you need to gear up for the day ahead? Do you need to decompress after a stressful day? Do you need to work through some questions or concerns you have about a problem or a lesson plan? Have a specific purpose for your commute and choose your activity according to that purpose. Your takeaway truth for the week ahead is a quote is a quote from Rick Pitino who said, "Long-term success is a direct result of what you achieve every day." I encourage you to really make the most of your commute 
Use it to either get things accomplished or get yourself in a positive mental state where you're feeling accomplished and feeling inspired and feeling reinvigorated. Thanks for listening. Have a fantastic week. You can do this. And remember, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Truth for Teachers is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. For more great podcast recommendations, go to edupodcastnetwork.com. That's edupodcastnetwork.com.